स्थापकाय चर्वस्वे स्थापकाय चर्वस्वे अवतारेष्ठा कृष्णा ते नम असत मद्गमय तमसो मो तेर्गमय असत मद्गमय तमसो मो तेर्गमय मृत्योर्मातंगमय शांति 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 लेट अस बो डाउन टू श्री राम कृष्ण द इम्बॉडिमेंट ऑफ ऑल रिलीजन्स द सुप्रीम गॉड इनकारनेट लेट अस प्रे टू हिम टू लीड अस फ्रॉम अनरियल टू रियल टू लीड अस फ्रॉम डार्कनेस ऑफ इग्नोरेंस टू द लाइट ऑफ नॉलेज to lead us from death to immortality today's topic path of meditation people all love to meditate it's a very interesting subject but we need to know how to meditate how to get the desired result it's a vast subject it's very important subject particularly those who are trying to live a higher life higher way of life meditation plays a very important role but if you don't know the subject properly but try to meditate you will be landing in some kind of problems which you will not be able to solve so it is necessary what you are going to meditate on what you are meditating upon what is your goal all these things must be very clearly known by the person who meditates upon he should know exactly what he is doing so meditation is a conscious process you are fully awake of what you are doing so meditation is a stage in concentration common to all spiritual paths each path of sadhana or spiritual discipline it begins in a different way but every path has a stage which corresponds to meditation there is christian meditation there is buddhist meditation there is hindu meditation and again 
Advaitic meditation, non-Advaitic meditation, varieties, varieties of meditation. As Sri Ramakrishna said, Jatomat Tathopat, as many faiths, so many paths. All the faiths have some form of meditation and everybody will reach the goal. That means it is some form of meditative awareness. Meditative awareness is intended upon by any path you follow. Patanjali's yoga, you are all familiar with, it begins with purification of mind, posture and breath control, followed by withdrawal of mind. Every stage is important if you have to have the desired result of meditation. Withdrawal of mind from external objects and afterwards fixing the mind at a particular center. When that is done, then comes meditation. Yama, Niyama, Asana, Pranayama, Pratyahara, Dharana, Dhyana, Samadhi. The ascending scale. It is, rises you from one stage to another stage. Finally, it gives you wonderful illumination. That's about Patanjala's Yoga. In the path of Jnana, it begins with Shavan Manan Nididhyasan. That is, hearing of sacred scriptures and reflecting upon the ideas. This leads to inquiry which corresponds to meditation. Shavan Manan Nididhyasan Nididhyasan is equivalent to meditation. In the path of bhakti, the aspirant moves from prayer singing of hymns and worship to meditation. He is very regular in his practices. He constantly remembers God and he is fully diverting his mind towards his chosen deity. Abhyas, Smaran, Bhavana. Even in the path of karma, one finds the need to maintain self-awareness in the midst of work. To begin with, the aspirant begins with a large number of thoughts in his mind. Once he sits for meditation, just he is bombarded by innumerable thoughts in the mind. He feels as if to get out from the meditation. It it becomes so intolerable in the beginning stage. So many thoughts come up. These gradually get reduced and he reaches a stage when there exists only a single thought in his mind. It's called Pratyaya. This is the state of 
meditative awareness. It is a highway which every aspirant has to travel in order to realize God or the Supreme Self. Beyond this path lies the luminous realm of spirit. There are many techniques of meditation. These are really techniques of dharana or fixing the mind. They are like different gates which open to the same highway. These techniques only teach you how to begin meditation. They only open different doors to meditative awareness. Each technique of dharana or concentration leads you through meditation to a certain experience. The beginnings and ends of meditation are different. But the process of meditation itself is the same in so far as a single thought is maintained. The nature of this single thought may also vary from person to person. For example, one may love to meditate upon Lord Shiva. The other one would like to concentrate on the form of Lord Krishna. The third one may like to concentrate on Jesus. Or somebody may like to concentrate on impersonal object like light or sky or sun. Something is necessary to concentrate upon. Nevertheless, essential meditative process, the maintenance of a single pratyaya or vritti is the same whatever be the object meditated upon. Now, second point is meditation is of two types objective meditation and subjective meditation. Objective meditation it is concentration of mind on an object. The object may be the form of a deity, light, sky, etc. or some qualities like love, compassion, strength or one's own self-objectified. So consciousness is focused on the object by an effort of will. Objective meditation is called Upasan. Subject to meditation is called Nididhyasan. That is Atma Vichar. Here there is no focusing of consciousness or effort of will. It is rather an attempt to seek the source of consciousness to trace one's eye back to its roots. Who is this I? So just trying to probe this idea. It's a process in which the ego instead of rushing towards objects as it constantly does withdraws into its own original source, the Atman. 
mind is properly to be sharpened through training and should be strengthened by the observance of continence upasana or objective meditation gives the mind the necessary training everything is in training you get good training you will be expert after practicing upasana for some time it becomes easier to practice nididhyasan masudan saraswati a great advaitin he has written a wonderful spiritual text called advaita siddhi it classifies aspirants for jnana into two groups the one group is called krutopasti meaning those who have attained proficiency in upasan the second type is akrutopasti those who go directly to inquiry without practicing upasana regarding objective meditation you are all very familiar with the process the guru initiates the spiritual aspirant with a mantra and prescribes upasana for his spiritual practice one of the aims of upasan he is to establish a living relationship with god an eternal relationship between the eternal soul and the eternal god as vivekananda puts it the ordinary ego of which we are all so painfully aware is not eternal it keeps on changing but is constantly undergoing modification only the atman our true higher self is unchanging and eternal this means in order to establish a truly loving relationship with god it is necessary to be aware of one's higher self self inquiry leads the aspirant away from the ego towards his true self upasana increases one's power of concentration nididhyasan enables him to abide in his real abode within and remain calm and unaffected by his environment combination of nididhyasan and upasana satisfies both the head and the heart concentration can be practiced on any object in fact in our daily life we are all concentrating on something or other most of the time this kind of concentration is more or less unconscious and is done under the compulsion of desires so i want to become a doctor night and day keep on studying vigorously so that i can get necessary qualification so his whole mind is sitting on the subject of medicine he is not satisfied till he gets the degree true meditation differs from it in being a conscious process involving the detachment of the will from lower desires 
and it's focusing at a higher center of consciousness. Every path is beset with difficulties. No one can achieve anything great in any field without overcoming obstacles. According to Hindu tradition, human afflictions have been classified into three groups. It is important to know all these details so that you can follow the process of meditation without any desperation. Problems come to strengthen you. Problems come so that you can overcome them. So three groups, the one group is called Adhidaivika, an unfavorable environment, unexpected calamities, psychic disturbances, similar troubles originating from unknown causes. These are all classified as Adhidaivika. The next group is Adi Bhautika. Difficulties created by others. Thirdly, Adhyatmika. Obstacles created by one's self. He himself creates the troubles. Of these, the first two groups, Adi Daivika and Adi Bhautika, are more or less beyond the control of the aspirant and are regarded as results of his past karma. Only those internal obstacles which he himself creates by his wrong attitudes and actions they are within his control. That is, Adhyatmika difficulties, obstacles, can be controlled. And in spiritual life, these are the only ones that matter. Once these internal troubles are overcome, external obstacles will become powerless to impede spiritual progress. So, now we have to find out what are these internal obstacles coming in our way of meditation. If you know these are the obstacles, then you know where you are. Otherwise, you'll be simply worrying, what? I got initiation 20 years back, nothing has happened. On the other hand, I have become worse. Even without getting initiation, he, he might have become worse too. But now he finds a reason. Anyway, what are these internal obstacles? There's a famous text, Sankhya Karika, It enumerates these obstacles. They are divided into three groups. One is viparyaya, false knowledge. Second, ashakti, incapacity. Third, tushti, satisfaction. This false knowledge, Viparyaya, is of five types. The Sankhya Karka has dealt with this subject in thorough detail. 
is remarkable to know these things so false knowledge is of five types one is ignorance second egoism third attraction fourth hatred and five the fifth one clinging to life these are the five types of false knowledge and these are further subdivided that come to about 62 to 62 types of false knowledge which i am not going to list them here to give a knowledge how many obstacles are there i just mentioned it the second type ashakti that is the incapacity the natural incapacities of one are said to be 28 every spiritual aspirant must be aware of his limitations he must be aware of his weaknesses though he should not brood over them physical strength does not necessarily mean mental strength and spiritual power is something quite different from mental power in order to get a true spiritual experience one needs spiritual power and if one doesn't have it one should first of all be aware of it and then one should pray to god who is the ocean of power third type is tushti satisfaction the sense of obstacle in spiritual life under this category are included not gross sense pleasures which the average aspirant is supposed to have overcome but subtle delights and consolations which prevent the aspirant from going forward the sankhya karika speaks of nine types of satisfaction one is the satisfaction produced by early spiritual progress or minor spiritual experiences this is one of the commonest obstacles many aspirants struggle hard they practice meditation and japa with great earnestness for some years but after attaining a certain degree of purity and calmness of mind their interest in spiritual practice cools down that is a dangerous point there are others who remain contented with theoretical knowledge derived from books it is enough no more is needed this kind of uh, satisfaction is an obstacle for getting the final result a second type of satisfaction may come from certain external changes like wearing ochre robes keeping a stock of spiritual books in his room etc he is satisfied with them another kind of satisfaction comes from the false faith in time and fate no doubt spiritual progress takes time and there is an element of uncertainty in getting spiritual experiences but to think that everything will happen gradually in course of time or that nothing happens without luck is only an attitude of escape and a great obstacle to spiritual progress the sankhya karika also warns against the false satisfaction 
produced by misconceived and premature renunciation of work external renunciation and austerity can create a sense of achievement and the feeling that nothing more is required in spiritual life these lower satisfactions and fleeting fulfillments neutralize the soul's true aspiration for supreme bliss and highest fulfillment sri ramakrishna's parable illustrates this point clearly merchants you know they keep big heaps of grain in their warehouses around each heap they strew some puffed rice rats come they are just enjoying the puffed rice the whole night and they go away satisfied forgetting that one share of rice produces 10 shares of puffed rice so these rats won't touch the main stock they just spend the whole night in eating up puffed rice and go away now patanjali maharshi in his raja yoga he also mentions obstacles in meditation nine main obstacles are listed by patanjali in raja yoga vyadhi sthana samshaya pramada alasya avirati bhranti darshana alabdha bhumikatva anavasthita chitta vikshepa te antaraya so these are the nine obstacles which patanjali mentions so that we become aware of these things we need to know these obstacles in order to have good meditation one is vyadhi disease that is one of the great obstacles in spiritual life if you are sick what can you achieve you can't do anything the disease is caused by an imbalance in the flow of prana prana shakti life energy the second one sthyana means lack of fervor or unwillingness to intensify meditation just every day i am doing morning about 10 minutes night if possible then or morning i am sure for some people evening it is sure morning they are not sure because morning they have to run for the job that means whole life goes like this doing 10 minutes morning or evening meditation there is no fervor there is no intensity that's the great obstacle this may be caused by the presence of conflicts in the depths of the mind or by the lack of discrimination they may not take meditative life seriously because of their ignorance of the value of time and even a sense of life the third obstacle some share doubt that's also great obstacle some shares of two types one is an absence of faith in the eternal varieties of religion or an attitude of suspicion towards everyone suspecting everything referring to such people gita says agyascha saddhadanascha samshayatma vinashyati nayam lokosti na paro na sukham samshayatmanah 
the man who is ignorant devoid of faith and always doubting ruins himself for doubting soul there is neither this world nor the world beyond nor happiness his life is totally miserable the second type of doubt is a questioning attitude characteristic of an inquiring mind it is based on faith in certain fundamental truths spiritual life is a quest a seeking and without questioning and inquiry one is likely to follow the wrong path regarding the second type of doubt about meditative life swami vivekananda says doubts will arise in the mind about the truth of the science however strong one's intellectual convictions may be until certain peculiar psychic experiences come as hearing or seeing at a distance etc the fourth obstacle in meditation is pramada that is carelessness carelessness in spiritual life is of different types carelessness in regarding the senses carelessness in reading in talking carelessness in choosing one's company all this can tarnish the pure mind for most of the impurities or acquired through carelessness carelessness about regularity of meditation leads to the accumulation of dust on the spiritual feet as saint francis of assisi used to say to an advanced spiritual aspirant carelessness means forgetfulness of one's true self to remain without self awareness a true seeker constantly remains alert even in sleep he maintains pockets of awareness to a devotee of god carelessness means not always remembering god that is carelessness if you are careful you must always remember there's a beautiful verse in the sanskrit sampado naiva sampado children must be kept in some place not in the place where we talk seriously about some certain thing <laughs> sampado naiva sampado vipado naiva vipadaha vipad vismaranam vishnoho sampan narayana smritihi it means prosperity is not prosperity calamity is not calamity the real calamity is to forget vishnu the real wealth is remembrance of narayan that is how it is nicely explained so god alone is our true wealth and to forget him is our greatest misfortune the fifth abstraction in the spiritual life is alasya that is lethargy this means heaviness or inertia of the body and mind the preponderance of tamas caused by too much sleep or food or fatigue the sixth one avirati 
clinging to sense pleasures today you have got a holiday why can't you go there somewhere else to spend the time to enjoy some picnic so when they are busy they say we have no time to think deeply about spiritual matters when the time comes their mind runs for picnic so somehow the person will not be able to practice spirituality in serious way that is as long as the desire to enjoy things more and more is there you can't expect spiritual progress in spiritual life one may give up sense objects externally but internally his will may be still attached to them detachment of will giving up all sankalpas is necessary to get absorbed in meditation the seventh obstacle mentioned by patanjali in the rajyog is bhranti darshan false perception that is wrong notion taking a thing for what it is not it is generally due to lack of intelligence and discrimination for example an aspirant may see lights and hear sounds in various kinds during his early practices these things are very spurious and do not mean much but they get excited about these trivial experiences and they begin to think they have made great progress some think that they have reached high states of consciousness this incapacity to assess the super normal experiences at their proper worth is basically due to immaturity of soul those who cannot distinguish between the essential and non essential things in spiritual unfoldment find their progress blocked at a very early stage because they get entangled in this spurious experiences and they are side tracked this great distraction prevents the aspirant to dive deep inwards spiritual life built on false experiences is like a house of cards the eighth abstraction is alabdha bhumikatva it is a state that aspirant seems to make no progress and a dead wall appears to be facing him this failure to obtain a firm footing can cause distraction and disturb the perfect equanimity of the mind unless he has developed inexhaustible patience and capacity for self surrender the last one is anavasthitatva that is slipping down from the ground gained the mind sometimes slips down from the stage he has reached and one has to make considerable amount of effort in order to regain the foothold so continuous effort makes one reach the firm state sometimes inherent fickleness of the mind may be the cause of downfall from the stage this unsteadiness of the mind must be set right by special treatment you have to contact a competent spiritual person and immediately you must set right the things when he finds that his path of progress is obstructed 
he may be overcome by sorrow by depression palpitation of the heart or shaking of limbs and irregular breathing all these things may cause may come during the early stages of spiritual life most aspirants will have to face some of these reactions the ultimate source of all obstacles is ignorance avidya agyan it is because of ignorance that we don't see the light of atman and realize our true nature what does this ignorance do it separates the i the ego from the atman and it is this self alienation this self exile that is the root of cause root cause of all our troubles the alienated ego identifies itself with the mind and the body and the world and its objects this identification leads to the experience of pleasure and pain and from experience are born the three main attitudes or reactions love hatred fear which leave their impressions or samskaras deep in the mind these past samskaras determine our present and future thought and actions what we have called obstacles are all produced by samskaras if we try to remove our obstacles one by one by destroying each samskara separately it may take a very long time and we may never succeed at all because by the time we have destroyed one samskar we would have collected 10 more through ignorance so what should be done we should therefore try to destroy the root cause of all samskaras and obstacles namely ignorance ignorance covers the atman like a screen when the screen is lifted even partially the brilliant light of the atman streams forth when the soul realizes its real nature it ceases to identify itself with the mind the body and the external world and all our misery comes to an end this is the spiritual solution to the problems of life so then the fundamental problem of spiritual life is how to remove ignorance from the soul instead of worrying about their limitations and obstacles if spiritual aspirants give all their attention to the problem of ignorance they would save so much time and energy to know the difference between real knowledge the light of atman and ignorance and to value the true knowledge above everything else this is the first lesson to be learned in spiritual life ignorance is the ultimate source of all obstacles the sole purpose of meditation is to remove that ignorance to lift the curtain covering the atman so by meditation we are trying to remove all these obstructions to remove ignorance however this can't be accomplished in a day it needs persistent struggle for months and months years and years and in this struggle no quality of mind is more necessary than an unshakable faith by faith is meant not a mere belief but a temper of the will faith is the orientation of the will towards the ultimate goal let the body 
senses, emotions, desires, reason and the mind itself move in any way they like. But as long as the will is firmly directed towards the goal, the aspirant will move forward in spite of all obstacles. So, to keep the will resolutely fixed forever towards an unknown reality is not possible unless it is enlightened and guided by faith. The creation of such an enlightened goal-oriented will is the first step in overcoming obstacles. This is what Patanjali means when he says Tat Pratishedhartam Ekatatva Abhyasaha In order to overcome obstacles one should practice one-pointedness. Once the will is turned inward towards its source, the Atman, the rest is all in the hands of the Divine. Human effort can go only so far. Beyond that, everything will take place according to the laws of spiritual world. The purpose of prayer, the purpose of worship, is to detach the will from desires and turn it Godward. The purpose of meditation is to fix the will at the door of the inner chamber. This chamber is a heart or buddhi where shines the light of the Atman. The door to it remains closed in most people. Meditation is only a continuous knocking at this door. But you must know it is the Divine who opens the door. This is the meaning of revelation. Knocking must be done. Opening will be done by God Himself. So true spiritual experience is a revelation. It is not something created by human effort, but something new and spontaneous. It is the unseen hand of the Divine that lifts the curtain covering the soul. This is what Sri Krishna means when he says that to those who worship him constantly with love, he gives buddhi yoga. Tesham sarada yuktanam bhajatam priti purvakam dadami buddhi yogam tam yenamam upayantite. Lord Krishna explains this term out of mere compassion for them. He says, out of mere compassion for the spiritual aspirants, I, dwelling in their self, destroy the darkness of ignorance by the luminous lamp of knowledge. Tesha meva nukampartham aham ajnanajam tamaha nashayami atma bhavasto jnanadipena bhaswata. So the Lord removes the ignorance. By removing ignorance, which is a primary cause of all obstacles, divine grace provides the best means of overcoming obstacles. For those who are unable to turn their minds constantly towards God and are unable to establish a direct contact with the Divine, the only way is to seek the company of the Holy who act as channels of grace. Like an experienced traveler, a spiritually advanced person, knows a great deal about the unseen world of the spirit. A little guidance from such a person gives the aspirant 
the understanding and progress which it will otherwise take years to attain by trial and error so how it is very useful to come in contact with the spiritual soul to be in his company constantly one can easily get over these obstacles in the path of meditation so one has to struggle without losing heart so concentration then only becomes meaningful and finally one is able to experience the real self the empirical self is discarded and one sees the ever glorious self luminous atman once he has that experience he is completely absorbed in that ecstasy then there is no more misery at all all the miseries are gone he is enjoying the perpetual peace and bliss that is the path of meditation every path has got problems difficulties difficult situations but we have to march on see there is a water ordinarily if you see the water on the level ground it is simply lying there it becomes cause of brooding the mosquitoes and so on but if the water is made to run then you see the energy of the water in a spectacular way then if you put a dam across the running river you feel how tremendous energy is manifested through that water the spiritual life is like that the obstacles are like dams the obstacles come only your spiritual power gets more manifested that's the idea of obstacles we should not yield to the obstacles we should not be overcome by the obstacles but we should overcome the obstacles that's the way how to conduct our meditation with these words i conclude my talk thank you very much om sahana bhavato sahana bhunakto sahaviryam karavavahai tejasvi navadhitamasto ma vidvishavahai om shanti 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 hari hi o may the divine spirit protect us guide us give us strength and right understanding may we not hate one another may love and harmony be with us all peace 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 be unto all may the divine lord protect us may he nourish us may we work in harmony with great vigor may our study be illuminating and fruitful may we not hate each other peace 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 be unto all